We're in lesson 5 of chapter 7, which is exponential decay functions. First we're going to write a function rule, then we're going to graph and compare exponential functions, and then we'll solve a real world problem. Last lesson we learned about exponential growth functions, which are y equals a, which is a positive number, times b to the x power. All the b numbers that we worked with last lesson were above 1, and that's what makes them growth functions. They're going to grow when b is above 1, when we keep raising numbers above 1 to more and more powers. Today we're going to work with exponential decay functions. So it's going to be the same formula, y equals a times b to the x, but b is going to be between 0 and 1, usually in the form of fractions. And that's what's going to make them decay or get smaller. So if we use these examples down here, we have an exponential growth function, y equals 9 times 3 to the x power. Here we see that b is greater than 1. So because we're multiplying it times powers of 3, it's getting multiplied by 3 every time it goes up a power. So 1 becomes 3, which becomes 9, which becomes 27, which becomes 81. In the exponential decay functions, on the other hand, we see that this is 1 third for the b, which is between 0 and 1. It's in the form of a fraction. So we have 9 times the powers of 1 third. So every time a power goes up, we multiply it times 1 third again. And you'll notice what impact that has. These numbers are going to get smaller every time you multiply times 1 third. So it's actually decaying in a way. It's getting smaller. And if we multiply it times 1 third again, this would become 1 third, and then 1 ninth, and then 1 27th, and so on. So you're going to be able to tell if it's a growth function if the numbers are growing. You'll be able to tell if it's a decay function if the numbers are decaying. So that's what we're going to do now. It says tell whether the table represents an exponential function. If so, write a rule for that function. So we notice the first number is 1 ninth, then it becomes 1 third, then it becomes 1, then it becomes 3. I realize that this is growing here. Then every time it's being multiplied by 3. So if we're going to write this growth function, it's y equals a times b to the x power. We can solve for a by finding out what to the 0 power would be, which would be 1 here. So what times 1 equals 1 third? Well, that'd be 1 third. So y equals 1 third times b to the x. Then b is what it goes up by every time you raise the power. So then we would have y equals 1 third times 3 to the x for our formula. For this next function, as the powers are going up, I notice that these numbers are going down, or you could say decaying. So this would be a decaying function. So we have the same formula, y equals a times b to the x power. Let's solve for a, and then let's solve for b. Remember, I can solve for a by finding the 0 power, which turns this into 1. So 1 times a equals 1. Well, that just makes it 1. So a is 1, so y equals 1 times b to the x. Then b is the amount it changes every time you go up 1 for the powers. Well, I notice that we're multiplying this times 1 fourth. This is being multiplied times 1 fourth, or divided by 4 if that makes more sense to you. So that means that b would be 1 fourth. So I could forget about this times 1 because that's the same thing either way. So y equals 1 fourth to the x power. And then we make that in parentheses. Let's graph and compare some exponential functions now. So it says graph the functions of y equals 3 times 1 half to the x power, so a decay function. y equals negative 1 third times 1 half to the x power, so another decay function. Compare each with the graph of y equals 1 half to the x power. So let's start with the simple one first. We have 1 half to the negative second, so that would be the reciprocal times the positive exponent, so 2 over 1 times 2. So 2 over 1 to the second, which would be positive 4. 1 half to the negative first, so 2 over 1 to the first, which is 2. 1 half to the 0 power would just be 1. 1 half to the first power would be 1 half. Then 1 half to the second power would be 1 fourth. So if we're going to plot this out then, negative 2 would be negative 4, negative 1 would be negative 2, 0 would be 1, 1 would be 1 half, and then 2 would be 1 fourth. So 
we can start out like this and draw this curved shape. And it would keep extending all the way through. So you'll notice these decay functions, they're decaying at a decreasing rate. If you remember the exponential growth functions, they were growing faster and faster and faster as you went along. These decay functions, however, slow down their decaying because what we're doing is we're cutting this in half over and over again and you're cutting away from less and less as more you go on. So this is going to keep getting smaller and smaller but the amount of change is going to become very very minuscule almost unnoticeable as you get way out here. Let's see what multiplying 3 does to this situation. So we have 1 half to the x power which is 4 in this case times 3 would be 12 so 1 half to the negative 1, which is 2, times 3 is 6. 1 half to the 0 power, which is 1, times 3 is 3. 1 half to the positive 1, which is 1 half, times 3 is 3 over 2, or 1.5. And then 1 half to the second power, which is 1 fourth, times 3 is 3 fourths. So if we plot that out, we have negative 2 and 12. Negative 1 and 6. 0 and 3, 1 and 1 1.5, 2 and 3 fourths. You'll notice the shape of this line is pretty similar to the other one. It's slowing down as we're going along here, but it's going down at a little bit of a slower rate because this is three times as big. This is basically stretched three times. So this is 4, this would be 12, this is 2, this is 6. So everything's always going to be three times as high as the other one. But eventually it's going to be pretty much the same because these numbers are going to get pretty small, just like this one. Let's see what that negative one-third does to the situation here. We have one-half to the negative second, which is four, times negative one-third, so that's negative four over three. We have one-half to the negative first, which is two, times negative one-third, which is negative two over three. 1 half to the 0, which is 1, times negative 1 third, so negative 1 over 3. 1 half to the first, which is 1 half, times negative 1 third is negative 1 sixth. 1 half to the second, which is 1 fourth, times negative 1 third, which is negative 1 twelfth. So you're going to notice this is going to become pretty difficult to plot out. We have negative 2 and negative 4 over 3, which is right around there negative one and two-thirds, which is right about there, zero and one-third, we have one and one-sixth then, and then two and one-twelfth. So you'll notice this is also following a curve, which looks something like that. So you'll notice it's the opposite kind of curve, except this one happens a lot faster because this is times a fraction again. So this one's going to decrease really quickly and become pretty unnoticeable rather quickly as we go towards these numbers. So the big thing they want you to notice is that by changing the a value, you can really adjust how this is going to work. You can multiply times a large number to get those numbers higher, and you can see the change happening a little more slowly as it goes or you can have it times a negative number or a really small number and really make that change happen really quickly or also flip it using that negative. Now let's solve a real world problem. It says the number of acres of ponderosa pine forest decreased in the western United States from 1963 to 2002 by 0.5% annually. In 1963 there were about 41 million acres of ponderosa pine forests. We can use the same kind of model as we did last time, except this is the decay model. The only difference between this and the last one is that we were adding the rate to 1. Now we are subtracting the rate from 1 to make this less than 1. When we were adding, we were making it more than 1. So it'll be pretty similar to what we did before. y equals a, which is the initial amount, times 1 minus the rate, then to the time. So to the exponent of time. So we see the rate is 0.5%. 0.5% as a decimal is 0.005. So if we do 1 minus 0.005, that becomes 0.995. So if we write our equation, it's y equals a times 0.995 to the t. a is the initial amount. What does it start at? 
41 million. We'll just do 41 with that million understood. So 41 times 0 0.995 to the t power. And that's our function equation here. So y equals 41 times 0 0.995 to the t power. So for every year, you're going to multiply this 0 0.995 times the 41. If it's five years, you would multiply 41 times 0 0.995 five times. That's going to drop this number down more and more as the years go by. So let's solve for this situation. To the nearest tenth, how many million acres of ponderosa pine forests were there in 2002? Well, the amount of time, it seems, looks to be 39 years. So I'd plug in the 39 for the t. So we have 41, y equals 41, times 0 0.995 to the 39th power. So then we can solve that. We could do 0 0.995 to the 39th power and multiply that answer times 41. So the answer I got in my calculator was 33.719, or 0.7 to the nearest tenth, and that would be a million acres. So because it was losing 0.5% of its forest every year, that eventually dropped it down almost 7.5 acres down from its original amount of 41 million.